What's going on? El Nino. The ocean and atmosphere are a coupled system, working to balance the Earth's heat distribution in response to the uneven heating of the Earth's surface. This attempt to balance drives the major wind patterns and ocean surface currents around the world as they dance to move heat to where it is cold and cool where it's too warm. The trade winds are the prevailing winds in the tropics, blowing from east to west, from the Americas to Asia, and in part a result of this unequal heating. These winds were used for centuries by sailing ships crossing the world's oceans to conduct trade, giving them their name. Normally the trade winds are strong, dragging warm water across the Pacific where it piles up in the western Pacific as a pool of warm water. When the ocean waters move away from the coast of South America, cooler, nutrient-rich water from below moves up to replace it, a process called upwelling. This nutrient-rich water promotes the growth of plankton, microscopic plants and animals that are prey for small fish that, in turn, are prey for larger fish. The result? One of the largest fisheries along the coast of South America. But in some years, the trade winds weaken, or even reverse direction, allowing warm water piled up in the western Pacific to slosh back across the tropical Pacific toward the coast of South America. The upwelling of colder water slows down or stops. This lid of warm, light water prevents the deep, cold, heavier, nutrient-rich water from reaching the surface. The result? The collapse of a huge fishery. This is what Peruvian fishermen call El Nino, the Christ child, because it typically comes around Christmas time. Even though the name El Nino has this local origin, its impacts can be global in extent. An El Nino usually occurs about every three to seven years, and they aren't all the same. Some are much stronger than others. Really strong ones occur only infrequently, perhaps every 10 to 20 years. When a strong El Nino occurs, it can disrupt ocean conditions throughout the entire Pacific, which impacts weather around the globe for more than a year. The weather effects of each El Nino can be a blessing or a curse for different continents around the world. In some places, it may bring beneficial rain. In others, droughts, dangerous heat waves, and heavy rains and floods. Typically, an El Nino lasts less than one year. It ends when the trade winds regain their strength, pushing the warm water away from the coast of South America back to the west. But this adjustment may overshoot and swing too far, resulting in unusually cold water off the west coast of South America. This is called La Nina, the little girl. More often, it ends up somewhere in the middle. It's like a dance. Sometimes the music speeds up, sometimes it slows down. In this dance, the atmosphere initially has the lead and the ocean follows. Later, the ocean controls and the atmosphere follows. It is the extreme El Niños and La Niñas that take the greatest toll on humans and on marine life. Fortunately, our ability to forecast El Niños has improved dramatically over the past few decades. Our instruments have gotten better. Our records of ocean temperature have gotten longer. And measurements taken by satellites, used with those taken by ships and ocean buoys, are providing more detailed information over entire ocean basins. Our world is warming. Our climate is changing. How will this impact future El Niños? Scientists have made great strides in improving our understanding of El Nino, yet there is still much to learn and many exciting research questions remain. As our understanding improves, our ability to predict El Nino and its impacts will provide tremendous benefits to people across the planet. This is just one of the important challenges we face. <laughs>